Hey guys, just so you know, StreamerBot is as easy to download as going to streamer.bot and clicking their download button. It's pretty simple. If you want to learn about StreamerBot, came to the right place. I'm here to show you what you can do with StreamerBot to start out. Nothing complicating, nothing complex, just simple actions and ways to use it. Let's go. So the first thing you want to do is you want to connect StreamerBot to OBS and it's pretty simple. All you have to do is download the WebSocket and download it as I describe in this video. And that's about it. Admittedly, I have not connected to Streamlabs OBS, but I'm guessing it's very similar process if not the same. First things first, I want to go through the settings because a lot of people want to jump straight into the actions at the channel point rewards and commands and no. First things first is to get this looking the way you want to look. If you use OBS, you're going to want OBS to show. If you use Streamlabs OBS, you're going to want Streamlabs OBS to show. Pretty much in short, this main tab visibility, you check what you want to show and you uncheck what you don't. Really couldn't be much more simpler. And on the right here, the settings tab visibility is the exact same thing for what settings you want to see. Weirdly enough, this is the settings for the settings. It's setting exception. <laughs> and over on the right there, you can see two boxes, one for minimize to tray and one for confirmation to close. Simply put, minimize to tray means if you close it, it'll minimize instead. And confirmation on close is the are you sure message when you go to quit. Now on to general. First thing, your audio output device, put it to whatever your headphones are. Or if you're using voice meter banana, set it to whatever you feel you should for that. Unfortunately, I don't use the cues yet. I'm still figuring that out, but I believe that is how you separate sort of like a group. So if you have, let's say like a mic redeem, like it makes you sound like Alvin, and you also have another one that makes you sound like a rabbit. Yeah, let's go with that then obviously you don't want both of those to be able to be redeemed at the same time. So you would set them in the same queue, which would put the second one in a queue from the first rather than activating both at the same time. Next thing you want to do is you want to connect your Twitch over here in the Twitch accounts tab. All you do is connect your Twitch account, give it access and again, done. StreamerBot is so simple and I love it. It's just a click of a couple buttons and you have things set up, you have things connected. It's amazing. So now that we have StreamerBot looking exactly the way we want it to, first thing you want to do is you want to make an action. So let's go over to the actions tab here, right click and add. Give it a name, give it a group if you so choose and done, but not quite because we want to make a sub action from that action. That action is essentially the name for what's going to happen. For example, I have this Alvin action under my voices group. And if I click on it, you'll see that the sub action shows up a little tiny list. This is what it physically does. So just to try to run you guys through an action, I'm going to right click add. I'm going to let's send a message in chat. Why not? Let's send you guys are amazing. LOL, JK. <laughs> I know, I know, I'm funny. And after that, let's have it turn on a filter on my mic that I use. All right, so this is after recording that I realized I never showed you how to turn off the filter afterwards. So it's pretty simple. We're going to add a delay of however long you want. I would do 30 seconds, which is 30,000 milliseconds. Then add that filter again. And simply hide it. Done. Now back to the video. So now we have an action done. So when this is activated, however we do it, which I will show you later, it will do the sub actions. So it will send a message in chat and then it'll toggle the filter. Now I realized I kind of jumped ahead here. Don't worry, I'm going to go over these actions 
that show up when you right click in sub actions. But for now, I'm going to show you how to use one of these actions. And the easiest would be a command. So let's go over to the commands tab. And yours is probably empty. So let's right click it. Let's add one. In the commands box on the top left that you see there, I would recommend putting an exclamation mark or some kind of symbol before it. So it's not just a word, but let's put exclamation mark test. So that's the command. And whenever that is sent to your chat by whoever you give access to, it'll activate this action in the Dropbox here. Yes, I have a long list. Set it to the action you want it to do, which you will only have one if you created that one action. Click OK. Go to your Twitch chat, whether it's in OBS or on your browser. Type in exclamation mark test and you will see that it sent a chat in chat and it toggled your filter. So now that I'm done jumping ahead, let's get back to these sub actions. So when you right click in sub actions and you hover over that add action, there's a nice long list there. There's keyboard press, there's delay, there's get quote, there's action, there's Twitch, sound, slobs, OBS. There's so many selections. It can be a lot. Just think about where you want to do this action and go there. Like if it's a Twitch chat, obviously you would go to Twitch. Or if it's a filter in OBS, obviously you go to OBS. Unfortunately, there's not a setting to change what you can see here. So even though I don't use slobs, it's still there, which is not really that big of a deal, but it's something that I wish you could change. My most common are OBS sounds and Twitch. Those may be the three that you use the most, depending on if you code or not, you may use the C sharp option there. I have no clue about that. I could not help you there. Though I am looking into the logic section there, I'm not good at it yet. So I don't want to try to teach you anything and be wrong, but I will go in there and mess with that a little bit and see what you can do. Now, even better inside of these sub actions, there's variables. So things like a username or account, I guess, or followage time or many other variables that I'm not thinking of right now. I'm just totally blinking. The most common you may use is the username. So let's go back to that action that we made earlier. Let's edit that text from, Hey chat, you guys are awesome to, Hey, percent target user percent. You are awesome. LOL JK. Now to you, that's kind of weird. You're going to be like, why would I want that sent in chat? That just looks weird. It makes no sense. Hold on. Cause this is where the variables come in. Now what we're going to do is we're going to right click again add action, go to Twitch and get user info for target. You're going to select that. What I typically do is highlight it, AKA click on it, hold control and hit up. You can hit up or down to move something quick tip on that. But I would put that above this message and leave it there. And if we go back to our chat again, if we do exclamation mark test, you will see it says, Hey, your username, you are awesome. LOL JK. It replaces target user with that person's name. So like you could have a friend come in and just do exclamation mark test and it'll say their name. Or if you have a second account, you could do it there and it'll say that name. It's whoever sent that and variables are not meant only for commands. They're meant for anything that you use it for. All the actions can be used for anything and it can actually be used for multiple things. As a matter of fact, I have some actions that are used by commands and voice control, which voice control is an interesting thing, by the way. So speaking of it, let's get to it. Why not? Let's add another action. And this time we're specifically going to have OBS. At least I use OBS pick slobs. If that's what you use, have it changed the scene to whatever you desire. Let's go over to voice control. Now, real quick, if voice control is grayed out for you, then you have to turn it on, on your computer itself. You have to turn on the speech recognition software on windows. I don't know what it is on Mac or Linux or anything like that, but on windows, you have to turn on speech recognition or else this will not work. That is under settings, time and language speech. And if you scroll down not too far, you'll see a button 
that says start speech recognition. It's a bit of a long process. It's a lot of talking, but it's so that your computer can recognize what you're saying and know you better and understand what you're saying. I mean, if it's confident in what you're saying, then that's better, right? That's exactly what you want. Don't talk differently into this. Don't try to make your words more clear, because if that's not how you talk, then it's not going to act right because you talked different in the recognition than you did normally. Just talk into it normal. It will be about a 10 minute process. It's long, but it's worth it. But anyway, back to voice control on StreamerBot. Here you can also right click, add, and all you'll do is you'll give it a name. You can name it whatever you want. Like if this is to change a scene, you could call it Rose. Don't matter. The name does not matter. And the command, that'll be whatever the words you say are. So if you say, I want to switch, then that's what you would put in the command line. And the next Dropbox is exact, start, or anywhere. Exact means that only this has been said in this sentence, which is one thing I didn't touch up on. With voice control and streamer bot, it recognizes sort of sections as you talk. Let me give you an example. If I say this sentence all at once with no break in between, then streamer bot will read this all as one chunk. However, if I read this sentence in bits and pieces, then streamer bot will pick it up as different sections. So if you pick something to be exact in location, then that's all that can be said in that break. So if you set this to, I want to switch, that is all you can say. You can't say, all right, guys, I want, I want to switch. It won't work. That's more words in the whole section. You can have it start with it, which I think is kind of weird, but there may be a specific situation I'm not thinking of. So up to you. And then there's anywhere. And that means if it recognizes this section, anywhere in, in any sentence that you say it'll do this action which sounds a little scary but i use it for things i say commonly like if you want to join the discord it'll pop up a little link to my discord and it's kind of neat i typically switch over to my just chatting screen and sometimes i forget to switch back so if i'm in the middle of the game and i'm in a moment and i look up i'm like oh i didn't change i'll just go game please and it'll switch over to the game. It's so cool. So that's that's a couple different ways you can use the voice commands. And the very last thing you're going to go through is action. You're going to have this do whatever action you want it to do. And that is what you named the actions over in the actions tab. So whatever you named your scene change action, that's the one you would want to pick for this. Click OK and it's done. When you say those words, however you set your location, that is what will happen. I just really wanted to show that to you guys because I really like it and I really enjoy it. You guys, not kidding, you guys should stop by my Twitch and see me use this thing. It's so cool. Now, there's one thing that took me a little longer than I'd like to admit to find. And it's because it's weirded a little weird, if you ask me. But if you go to the settings tab and go to timed actions, assuming you still have that visible from user interface. If you right click and add, it'll have a name, an interval, and lines. Once again, you can name this sort of whatever you want. Actually, you can name it whatever you want. Let's call it Capricorn, why not? And if I choose the interval, I hate, hate that this is in seconds. It should be in minutes, or at least a selection between the two. But whatever you want your interval to be, put that in there. And however many lines you want in between it, meaning how many different chats in between the last one and this current one, put that amount there. And then the action once again is the name of whatever the action you want it to do. So let's just select our scene change thing again. I'm going to set this to like five seconds just for a preview. Let's click OK. So as you see, it switched over to that scene. And as you see, it's going to switch back to that after the five seconds because that's what it's supposed to do. And if I keep switching scenes, it'll keep going back to that scene that I selected to be changed to. That's what it is, a timed action. It'll just constantly repeat, unless you uncheck that repeat box, which I don't see the point in that really, but it's that's what it is. I use this for call to actions, AKA CTAs. 
essentially it's the same exact idea as Streamlabs CloudBot. And if you're familiar with that, this is actually pretty easy to get into. That's exactly what I did. I used the CloudBot on Slobs for so long and literally within 20 minutes, I moved all of my timers over to this. It, it takes no time. It's so easy. One thing I will be showing you in a future video is how to use StreamerBot to make your redeems a lot more interactive. It's really neat what you can do. I know I've said that a hundred times, but it is just mind blowing how easy it is to set up some insane things. One last little thing I want to go over is creating channel point rewards. So as you see, if you connected your Twitch, you will see all of your redeems there. However, the one problem I have with StreamerBot is if you right click and edit a current channel reward, you will see the entire top section be gray. What you have to do is you have to duplicate it and then delete the old in order to make it a streamer bot applicable redeem. It's relatively simple, but it's still annoying. You have to have your channel point redeems open on Twitch because again, streamer bot can't even delete those. If you right click and add, let's just add one. Let's create one. Let's title it the three musketeers because we can. Let's have it cost one because we're broke. So I'm sure our viewers are broke. And prompt is the same thing as the description of the redeem in your Twitch. So this is typically used to explain what the redeem is for. Like for me, I have my Italian stallion. So in the description, I pretty much just have it say, hey, have me take a shot. You can change the background color. You can have it skip the actions queue. You can limit the total amount of redeems in a stream, the total amount of redeems per user, a cooldown. You can even have a cooldown action, though I don't use that. You can also, by the click of a button, you can enable and disable a redeem, which is so cool. So that's all I got for you guys today. Thank you for watching. And if this was helpful for you, don't forget, liking only takes a moment for you and it helps a channel like me greatly. Here's more videos for you to watch. If you would like to learn more about content creation related software, I'll see you guys later over and out. <laughs> Streamer bots awesome.